Today I'm making black wire flowers in a frame inspired by last week's live stream making colorful flowers. You're going to need 20, 22 and 28 gauge wire and your tools. I have the templates linked up in the description below. You can get any frame that you like and we're just going to start by tracing the rose shape you can trace it or you can freehand it. You'll uh, have the option to get the template in the description of the video. And we're just going to go around the shape. I started by tracing it and I ended up uh, freeforming it after a while. And we want the middle part to be like sort of spiraled out a little bit. And then once we've done a few spirals around, we're going to start forming the outer petals. And what we want to do for that is just bring them around, make a little point like a rose petal, bring it around and then thread the end through the previous wire. And that way we're going to hook all those petals together so they won't all come apart. So we're just going to take the end and thread it through and then just gently pull it making sure you're holding on to the wire that forms the petal and then you're just going to bring it through, give it a good little pinch and then we're going to form the next petal. So we're just going to curve it out by hand with our thumb and bring it up and then we're going to take the end and give it a good little pinch to make a little pointed part of the petal and then bring it around to the front and we'll take the end of the wire and put it in through the previous wire as we did before. And we're just going to work our way around and around, making the petals a little bit larger as we get towards the outside. So curve it around with your thumb and bring it up. And then with the tweezer nose pliers, these are the Zeron tweezer nose pliers. We'll make the little sharp bend and then bring the end through to hook it in place. You don't have to wind it around, just bring it through once and then pinch it so it holds in place there. Just give it a little wiggle so it's nice and snug and then curve the pedal, bring it up and then get your flat pliers and give it a good little pinch to form the tip of the petal and then bring it around. Like I said, you can trace the template if you like, or if it's easier, just do it freehand. It doesn't matter if they're a perfect size. It's nice when there's a variety of size in the petals. They don't have to be evenly spaced either. So just wiggle it around to hook it in place and then bring the wire around for the next petal. Just curve it with your, your thumb and your finger. That way it won't get scuffed up with the pliers. Just use the pliers to do a sharp bend at the tip of the petal. And again, curve it with your thumb. Have a look, make sure it's a good size. And then take the end. And now we're gonna string it through that first petal that we formed. And we're just gonna slowly work our way out, just hooking the wire into the petals as we go, just radiating out. It looks a little bit like a mandela. So we're just going to keep going with that. And when it's the size that you want, then we'll be able to form the stem. So just curve out the stem. You can compare it to the template and trace that first leaf. And then to do that sharp point, use your flat pliers, give it a good little push check it again and then curve it around to make the leaf. So now you can wind it around to hold it in place and form your next leaves. We'll just give it a sharp little bend, curve it around and here I'm going to do two uh, leaves to make it a little more asymmetrical. So bring it around curve it down and then we'll do the next leaf. 
Just bring it around, curve it with your fingers, bring it down, and then make that sharp bend. Hold it and curve it around. So we have the basic shape of those two leaves. You can match it up again with the template and then curve it around. So we want one wire to sit above the other wire. Hold them with the flat pliers and curve it around to hold those wires together. And just straighten out the wire bit. So there is your rose. Now for the fern, we're just going to wiggle the pliers, the, the small round pliers, to make a kind of a crinkle. Now, uh, Beetle On uh, Artistic Wire has a cool crinkle tool that I am awaiting in the mail, so when I get my crinkle tool, I will do a tutorial for that. But if you don't have the crinkle tool, you can just use your round pliers and bring the wire back and forth. So I'm going to do the first few leaves in this manner, just wind it back and forth. It's also a little bit like how I've done a sheep in the past to give the impression of curly hair. This just gives the fern leaf a little bit of texture. So we have our first three leaves and then we want to bring it down to the next level to do the next leaves. Now I ended up doing a whole bunch of the wire at once, just to, I thought it would be easier just to crinkle a whole bunch at the same time. And then you're going to wind those to hold those two leaves together. And then we're going to bend it out to do another set of two leaves. So with the wire already crinkled, it makes it a little bit easier. So we're just going to wind it back and forth and then twist the wire around to hold those two leaves in place and bring the wire straight down again and then as you go down we're going to make the leaves a little bit wider so we start small and then when the leaves become bigger as we go down the fern so you do your set of two leaves and then wind the wire around to hold them together and then you're going to keep going with it till we get to the bottom and then if you didn't have enough crinkles for the last leaf you can just with your pliers go in and crinkle the last one and then I'm just kept going until I ran out of wire you can cut your wire longer if you want a bigger fern that's not a problem and then once you're done we're just going to squeeze some of them together to make them a little more narrow so now for the dandelion I'm using 28 gauge wire and how much wire you use depends on how big you want the dandelion. I wound quite a bit of wire uh, on there to start and then what we're going to do is take a piece of 22 gauge wire and just wind it around to hold those wires together. So we just wind that 22 gauge around, give it a good little tug and then I'm going to clip it in the center there. So just clip them apart trim the little ends and I also want it to make it more secure so the wires won't come out so I just crisscross those 28 gauge wires to hold them firmly in place and then wound it around again with the 22. You really want those to hold in place otherwise the fine wires are going to fall out. So that's what we do there and then I'm going to curve them up and from there we want to pinch it a little more just to really make sure those bits aren't going to come out. You can even lay it on the table and press it down or give it a little tap with the hammer. So now we're going to take the 22 gauge wires and twist that together to form the stem. So just keep twisting, try to make an even twist and then clip the end so now we're going to work on the dandelion itself and we're going to curve out those thin wires and just form them around and then we're going to take the ends of those and just with our round pliers curve them around so they're not pokey and they look like the little seeds 
You could trim them. I found they were a little bit long, so you can go in with your cutters and trim them a little shorter. I actually ended up removing some of those wires. I found there were too many. Just depends on how full you want the dandelion to be, but you definitely want to curve all those wires and turn the ends into little loops. So it's a little finicky. It'll take a little while to do, but like I said, I removed some of the wires. I found there were too many, and then we're just going to curve them around. And then some of the center ones you can cut a little shorter as well, just to give it a little bit more depth. It just depends on how you like the look. You can go in and tweak it as you wish. So there's the dandelion. So now for the daisy, uh, this one I also did on the live stream and I'm just going to freeform it rather than follow the template, but you can follow the template if it's easier. And we're just going to form the petals. Now we don't want them to be all exactly the same. We're going to bend them at different heights. Some of them we're going to make little loops at the base. Some of them we're going to just bend the wire back on itself. And we're just going to curve the wires with our fingers and then bend the tip with our flat pliers to form the petals. And like I said, it's nice to have a variety of sizes and shapes. Some could be thinner, some can be thicker. And we're just going to work our way around until we've gone full circle. And if you want to compare it to the template, you can. Otherwise, if you have a good sense of dimension, you can just play it by ear and just make some a little bigger, some a little smaller and work your way all the way around. So just keep going with it. I like these Zeron tweezer nose pliers to do some nice fine bending. We're going to go back and forth, curve it around with your thumb. I said some of them could have little loops at the base some of them you can just bend the wire back on itself and we just want to come all the way around until it looks like you have enough petals let's curve it and then do another tip of the petal and just keep going till you like the look of it let's bring it around one last little bend and then from there we want to bring both wires to the same side and use the flat pliers to make a nice right angle bend. And then we're going to get our round pliers to turn the other wire around to attach it to the long wire. Just curve it all the way around. Bring the stem wire straight down. And then I'm going to take the end of the center wire with the round pliers, curve it around to start the spiral, and then hold it with my thumb and finger and just rotate it in. Just bring it in. Depends on how much wire you have. You could have left more wire if you wanted more of a spiral. So curve it out. And now we're going to form the leaves. So just bend it up. Just did it by hand and then around. Sometimes you don't need the pliers. And then we're going to curve it around again and bend it for the other leaf. Hold it snugly, bring the wire all the way around to hold those leaves together. And if you want to do another leaf, you can bring it around again. And then just take the wire again and twist it around to hold them all together and there is your daisy. So the last thing I made was a little stem of grass and we're just going to do this one very loosely. So make a little loop at one end, hold it with the flat pliers and just very loosely wind it down the stem. Start with the pliers and then let go of the pliers and just hold the end with your thumb and finger, and we're just going to bring it down, say about an inch and a half, could be a little longer depending on how big your grass is going to be. And then we're going to bend the wire back on itself and go back towards the top. 
This is very, very abstract and very easy to do. So we'll just bend the wire back towards the top. We want to fill in all the little gaps, all the little spaces, and it still gives it a nice little texture. So just wherever you see a little gap, just wind it a couple of extra times, bring it back down, and you can use up all the wire or clip it if you have too much wire. And then just straighten it with your thumb and your fingers and there's your grass. So from there we're just going to get a frame and we'll remove the back of the frame. And then on the glass we're just going to place the flowers in a mirror image to what you want. And then we're going to put the backing on and then the firm back on the back of that. And there is your framed black wire flowers. So thanks so much for watching the video. Give it a big thumbs up if you liked it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for lots more wire art and jewelry making videos. And if you'd like to share photos of your wire art and jewelry, be sure to join the Wire Makers Club on Facebook. And if you'd like to check out my work on Etsy, my husband and I specialize in custom wedding cake toppers and funky jewelry. I also have a mailing list, so if you'd like to sign up below, I'll send you my Wire Art Essentials ebook. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you the next time.